We do have a couple of super chat questions. Uh, the Muslim apologi apologist, thank you for your super chat. Is there evidence of Yahweh being a distinct God from Elohim? Where does Azhera worship come into the picture? All right. So, yeah. So Elohim is this. My my take on the word Elohim, Elohim is plural. And my take on it is that means all the gods. And so when they come up with this, frankly, revolutionary idea of monotheism, um, it's a real like intellectual breakthrough in many in many respects. They they take El and Yahweh and they come up with this new word Elohim, which means all the gods. My our God is all the gods. And so, you know, that's dating. I mean, I don't know when they start using that term Elohim uh, instead of El and Yahweh separately, but I believe that is, you know, that is, that is it. Like that's when they start calling them Elohim. That's when they've been fused together. Now, Asherah worship comes to the picture because she is the popular religion. That is the religion of the common folks. The goddesses are the popular religion, the dying and rising God. These are all the nature-based traditions that seek life, death, and regeneration. And these are, these are really popular religions all across the Near East. And they uh, have a revolution against it. So when they're getting rid of Asherah and the cutting down the Asherah poles repeatedly, and then the people put them back up and the Yahweh cut the Asherah pole down, this is a reformation. This is a fight. It's kind of like the Protestant Catholic Reformation that played out over centuries in, you know, the Middle Ages in, uh, you know, in Europe. Um, you know, this, rev ref ref this reformation, this revolution against the traditional paganism plays out over like four or five, actually, I think it plays out over 2,500 years, but really in this context, it's four or 500 years that they're that they're really fighting about it. And so right up until the end of the uh, first temple, when they go into, into, into exile, there's a big confrontation between Jeremiah and some of the women. Um, and th this particular group has gone into, into exile in Egypt, not in Babylon, but and nonetheless, it's like in the immediate wake of the destruction of Jerusalem when they're the refugees. And the prophet Jeremiah castigates the women for their worship of the queen of heaven. And the women are like, hey, what are you talking about? No way. This is uh, Jeremiah 44. Everything was fine when we worshiped the queen of heaven. It was only when we stopped worshiping the queen of heaven that we suffered from famine and bloodshed. And they tell Jacob or they tell uh, Jeremiah to, to shove it and go away. And he does. Um, and so Asherah was the popular religion. And but it's a religion that's full of sex and drugs. It's a religion of the old matriarchies where the women have, one of the big things they're fighting about um, with Asherah and why this reformation is in place is because in my opinion, the argument I'm making in my other, my other work is that <clears throat> Asherah is from the old tribal matriarchies. When the women, when you trade, built your families around maternal bloodlines instead of paternal bloodlines, and this was the default for most of humanity, most of our history, um, in 80, 90 percent of indigenous people, indigenous tribes and historical tribes are maternal. You trace your bloodlines to the mother. It only makes sense because to trace your bloodlines to the father obligates you to police the women's sex lives and control the women's sex lives and make sure that the girls stay virgins until they're married and the women are monogamous, the wives are monogamous, the men even though the men are not monogamous at all. And so that is not the default of humanity. The default of humanity is to build your families around the mother's maternal bloodlines. And in those cultures, the women's sex lives are not being policed. <clears throat> and the women, and they celebrate women's sexuality. They celebrate women's sexuality as a source of life. And so they have, they have tons of sex traditions. And, you know, the Dionysian and, and Bacchus cults that came right through Greek and Roman times were all part of this. Dionysus is worshipped alongside Demeter in the Eleusinian Mysteries. He's totally gay. And they totally, you know, and it's not just about sex. Sex is part of it. It's it's about the full cycle of life. So they they will, there's a whole, um, they will, the, 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 the God will die tragically. And they will mourn, they'll spend an entire day mourning and crying about the God who died. And then the next day, the God is miraculously brought back to life by the powers of the great goddess. And they'll all celebrate. And then they'll celebrate with music and dance and feasting and ultimately, you know, and drugs is all a part of it. And then ultimately with sex, like they have a great big feast and then everyone that wants to has sex. And so, and these are celebrations. And if the girls get pregnant, so be it. Like, it's not a problem because they're not tracking paternity. And, but if you want to track paternity, you got to shut these old religions down. You can't have these traditions going on there. They completely violate any tenant of uh, paternity. And so, 
this is the era when the Greeks and Hebrews both put these traditions when they shut them down. Um, and well, they or at least the Greeks reformed them and the Israelites shut them down completely. Um, but they've got to reorder these old matriarchal traditions to make them fit in a new, in a patriarchal context. Because by the time we get into the Iron Age, the whole world has shifted into patriarchy. Um, but it hasn't been patriarchy since all of history. Most of human history is matriarchy.